welcome to Canon Conversation. We just started an advanced Christian series and first topic yesterday was about does God change circumstances and we've seen that uh, well if he does he doesn't do it in the way that we think and we shouldn't really rely upon those things so basically in summary we saw that God's will 1 Timothy 2 4 is for all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth God's will isn't for you to make a bunch of money to have great health great family support God's will is for you to recognize your sin and trust in Jesus death burial and resurrection as atonement for your sin so then you're saved <coughs> and then once you're saved God's will is for you to read God's Word rightly divided and read Paul's epistles Romans through Philemon get the sound doctrine from there and use the mind of Christ to apply it in your life and the doctrine of suffering which we'll probably get to at some point in the advanced Christian series is that um, the light, our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for itself a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies those, and those are all quotes from 2 Corinthians 4, verse uh, 17 and 18, verse 7 and verse 10. And what those tell you is that God's focused on the spiritual. And so once you're saved, God is actually wanting you to suffer. Because if, you, if Satan is the God of this world, and he has the world operating by his course then we need to, uh, when we apply the sound doctrine that we learn from Paul's epistles, then we're going to be going against the world, and so then we'll end up suffering. And not just from the world, but also from our own flesh suffering there as well. And so then that suffering is a good thing because then it gets us to focus on the spiritual. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, I most gladly therefore will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So when I am weak in the flesh, Christ is strong through me because I focus on the spiritual implications and not the physical. And so that's where, when we ask the question, does God change circumstances today? God, since God isn't interested in you getting a bunch of money and having great uh, health, and having great family and friends what he's because those are all things that are temporal in this life that will go away I mean, Jesus even said when his own mother and his own half-brothers come he said who is my mother who are my brethren and then he looks at the people who are following him behold my mother and my brethren those who do the will of God are my mother and, bro and brothers because yeah you've got physical mother and father and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews and all these uh, kids and grandkids you got all these who are physically related to you but if they haven't recognized their sin and trusted in Jesus death burial and resurrection as atonement for their sin then they are spiritually dead in their trespasses and sins and so then they're not going to be in heaven with you the people who will be in heaven with you are those who have believed the gospel and they are part of the body of Christ and so your mother and your father and your brother and your sisters and your aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews and kids and grandkids all those people in eternity anyway are going to be people who are believers so they're related to you spiritually but not physically and so why are we worried about making sure everybody likes us and please please people and why are we worried about doing well in this world because whatever we do we could have a, all you could have a thousand Facebook friends you could have uh, millions of dollars you could have uh, all kinds of you know good health and uh, be able to do things physically but when you get into eternity all that goes away and so when it when you ask, suppose does God change circumstances when people, when Romans 8.28 says God works all things together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are called according to His purpose, people think of that physically speaking. And so what they'll do is they'll pray, and this is where the prayer comes into the circumstance thing, and they'll pray and they'll say, well, I'm praying, 
you know, I've got something to happen in my life. Now I need a job. I lost my job, so now I need a job. So I'm going to pray for God to give me the perfect job that He has for me. And so then when you, uh, you pray about it, and then uh, let's say you go on interviews and say, you think the job is great, but for whatever reason you don't get it. Well, then you'll say, well, uh, you know, God, God must have something better for me. When God shuts a door, He opens a window. So this is much better, something better. Yeah, I thought it'd be great, but there's something better. God's got a season of learning that I need to go through. And so He's not going to give me the perfect job that I want. He's going to give me the one that He wants me to have. And you got all these ideas out there. Well, so does God change the circumstance for you? If, if you're praying for things and then God, you pray for the job, well then does God give you the job that He wants you to have? Or does you get the job that you want? Or do you get the job that that's the one that's available? And so you got to ask the question, does God manipulate the circumstances? You know, did God lead me to that posting on Indeed.com to find that job posting? Um, so that I could get the job? Maybe He led me to it so I wouldn't get the job. And so that um, I would learn and get interview experience for the next job. Or, you know, you can look at anything from an angle. You can say, okay, I got a job. Well, God must wanted me to have it. Really? Well, Satan is the God of this world. Do you think the person who employed you, um, do you think that person reads their Bible every day and uses the mind of Christ? Do you think that they... Um, that they were praying to seek God's perfect candidate for that job? Probably not. So if they weren't looking for God's will, they were just looking for fleshly considerations, the worldly considerations, because it's a, it's a material job in the world. So if that's what they're looking for, then um, they're not guided by God. God doesn't hit them on the backside of the head and make them to not hire you and make them to hire you. They got free will, and they're probably going to use their free will according to the course of this world because they're in the world. Uh, so uh, chances are the decision for the job wasn't made according to God's will for you, but it was that um, either you w were the best candidate or you're not the best candidate for the job according to what they thought. I mean, that's usually how it works. Or it could be a political thing, and they didn't hire you because they wanted to hire the the payroll manager's son. You know, you, you don't know uh, what's behind anything. It could be politically motivated. It could be uh, motivated towards, or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe they got somebody there who maybe uh, they were going to give the job to, but they don't give it to them because they're because they're related to somebody else there. And so then they're afraid that they, you know, that's like, well, that'll mess up the internal controls or, or whatever. And so then they hire, they were looking for a complete outsider, even though they got somebody in there who is related, who already has a job there. Uh, you, you know, you got, you don't know what's going on. You, you absolutely don't know. But you, most of the time when it comes to picking a job, it's because it's some kind of fleshly considerations. Most of the time, they're not looking at it and they're they're not looking to say, well, who is the one who would be the best ambassador for Christ in this position? It's usually not how the world works. So, why would you think that God gave you the job or God didn't give you the job when God isn't going to override the free will of people and um, and there you're going to use their free will for fleshly, worldly considerations and not for uh, God's kingdom. And also, the thing is, if, you, if you're thinking that God's going to change circumstances to give you a job, you know, God's got some perfect job for you, well, why do you even do anything in the first place? So let's say God's perfect will for you is to do this job in... Uh, I don't know, maybe say it's in stay it's still in the area, but it's a plumbing job, let's say. He's got a plumbing job for you, okay? Um, so, for this specific guy, he wants you to be a plumber for Roto Rooter, I'd say. <laughs> a local Roto Rooter place, gonna be a plumber. Well, if that's God's will for me, then why do I even apply? And I don't know what God's will is for me, I don't know what job He wants me to have. Now, I could pray about it. 
but uh, how do I know what God's will is? First off, I can't find it in God's word. God's word doesn't say, thou shalt be a plumber for road or rooter. So I don't, I can't find it there. So then I say, well, I look for, I listen for the still small voice of God when I pray. So I pray and I've got a, I've got a peace. I've got a peace about it that God wants me to be the plumber for road or rooter. Well, how do you know that's God speaking? That's the thing. If you're listening for a still small voice uh, and you've got a voice within you, how do you know that's God? Because usually, I mean, I hear a voice in my head all the time, but that's my brain. It's not God overriding my brain to tell me something. The way God speaks to me is through His Word. If I want to, if God's given me His Word, and in His Word He's given me all things that pertain unto life and godliness, and He's abounded toward me in all wisdom and prudence, and the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid in Christ, which is found in His Word, then if I want God to speak to me, I got to read His Word and read God's Word, and then the Holy Ghost will teach me what it says, and then I apply the principles to the situation. That's why you know, God can't God can't write a book big enough to cover every single circumstance of, of your life to tell you what you should do. And as we've talked about in the beginning Christian series, you are not a spiritual child. You're a spiritual adult. So just like you don't call up your, when you're my age, I don't call my mom and say, okay, what color socks should I wear today? What color shoes? Which socks should I put on first? Should I put on both socks and then both shoes? Or should I put on one sock or one shoe? They did an All in the Family episode about that, you know? It's like, well, if I put both socks on and then both shoes, at least both feet are covered with socks. Should a fire come and I got to get out of the house? But if I put a sock on and then I put a shoe on and the other foot doesn't have anything on there, at least I got a shoe on one and I can hop out of the house and there's a fire. <laughs> And it's, you know, it's a funny thing because it was a, a sitcom. They're trying to be funny. But um, but seriously, I mean, if God loves me and he wants, and he's going to guide me, you know, point is how, how low will he guide me? If He's going to work all things together for my good and he's got a perfect will for my life and I want to be in the center of God's will, then how far does that extend? So you say, okay, well, it's about the one I want to marry and the one I want to get a job. That's usually how where I get a job. Those are the two things that people pray for. But what about the other things? You know, does God only care about, well, I'm going to make sure you marry somebody good and I'm going to make sure you get a good job, but after that, you're on your own. Well, no, then he's going to want me to, I mean, how far do you take it? You know, because... How, what order I put my shoes and socks on is very important if there is a fire. Or what color I'm wearing of the shoes and socks is very important if I'm trying to impress somebody and trying to color coordinate. Um, and I don't know what colors the other person that I'm trying to impress will like. So then I need to pray for God to lead me in picking out the right colors. So, you know, you, you can just carry it overboard and if you do pray for God to lead you to say to the job you know he's gonna be a plumber for road or rooter okay so I pray about it and I feel at peace about that so how do I know that that is just me maybe I really want to be a plumber for road or rooter usually when I got a voice in my head it's myself it's my it's called my brain and my brain is telling me based upon the knowledge that I have and the circumstances here, this is the decision that I'm going to make. And that's not God magically speaking with his still small voice, but it's my brain saying this is the best course of action given the situation based upon my knowledge and experience and similar types of things. And so if you want to know what God, so so I don't know, is it is it my brain working there? Is it the still small voice of my brain? Is it God telling me, magically telling me that knowledge? Or maybe it's the devil telling me. Or maybe it's the voice of my mother because I've heard her for many years say things. Maybe it's the voice of my spouse. You know, there's the Christian comedian made a joke about how the old man been married 50 years and it's like his, his wife is always telling him, slow down, slow down, you're going too fast. So now here he is. Now his wife has died and he's alone. And so now he's driving and it's like, uh, 
Well, I, it seems like my right foot should be pressing down on something, but I feel like I shouldn't really do that. I really should use the brake, I, I, you know, because my brain says it's the gas pedal I should be pressing down on, but my wife's been telling me for 50 years to press down on the, on the brake. So, um, you know, which one do I listen to? Is it my voice or is it my wife's voice? Because I've been hearing my wife for 50 years and now her voice is inside my head. So whose voice am I hearing there? If there's a still small voice, how do I, well, I feel at peace about it. Well, you know when you, you know when you most feel at peace about something is when it goes along, the thought goes along with what you want to do. <laughs> Let's say a, a guy asks a woman out on a date and she says, well, I want to do, I want to marry the guy that God has for me. So I'm going to pray to God about this guy. Well, chances are if she thinks he is ugly and uh, say doesn't have a job, he's just a lazy guy, doesn't have a job and he's ugly. Um, even if God's will is for her to marry that person, the still small voice inside of her is going to say, don't go on a date with that guy. Because that's the her brain saying, well, I don't like the guy because he's ugly and I know I'm just going to end up supporting him because he's lazy. He doesn't have a job. So it's not that... <laughs> It's not that God told her not to go out with a guy. I did all the time when I was going to Calvary Chapel. He hit all these young guy, young people there, and uh, and you you wouldn't have you wouldn't have anybody. You would think all these young people would go out on dates and get married. It's rare that you'd see that. Well, the reason is because uh, they're waiting for the voice of God, and of course the the ugly guys say we are convinced that the voice of God is telling the ugly guys to go out with the pretty girls and the pretty girls are convinced that the voice of God is telling them not to go out with the ugly guys but to go out with the handsome guys and so then nobody is going out with anybody <laughs> God led me to ask you out on a day well God told me no <laughs> you know so the point is, you know, it's, it's funny, but that's just how it works is, again, what did I say about the, the situation? So I've got this voice in my head that says based upon, and it's my voice, it's the mind, it's based upon my education and my experience and looking at the situation and what's going on, then I make a decision based upon that and that's me using my brain. So the way God works with you isn't to tell you how to do things. Because again, his word, he can't tell you when he wrote his word 2,000 years ago that you should be a plumber for Rotor Rooter. Because if he does that for everybody in every situation and every single time, um, there isn't a book big enough to contain all that stuff. So what God does is he gives you general principles to live by. He gives you the mind of Christ. So when you read Romans through Philemon, you're not going to be told who you marry. You're not going to be told what kind of job you should have. Uh, it's just like an adult. Again, I don't call my mom this morning. I did not call her and ask her what shirt I should put on. I put this shirt on and these pants and the outfit that I'm wearing based upon my um, experience with these clothes that I have and what would match and what would be acceptable in my work environment. Um, so I, I did all that myself, but you notice I did it based upon knowledge. I based upon information. So if I read God's word, if I read Romans through Philemon, uh, specifically because those are the instructions for us today, and I um, apply those things, then so I get the knowledge from there, and then I apply them in my life, and then I make the decisions. So the reason I didn't have to call my mom up to ask her what I should wear is because I've already gotten instructions from her for years because she picked out my clothes when I was a kid. And then, so you learn over time what you should do based upon how your parents or whoever teaches you what to do. And then you've got the knowledge and information to figure it out yourself. So too with God. God doesn't tell you, marry this person or get this job. Instead, he gives you general principles to live by. So you may say the reason that you end up as a plumber for Rotor Rooter isn't because God magically gave it to you. Because if he did, if God, if, if God is just working things behind the scenes, and we talked about that with fatalism, 
uh, in the beginning Christian series, then why do I even do anything? You know, why do I take the time to look through Indeed.com or wherever it is I'm looking for jobs? Why do I apply to jobs? Why do I get my resume together? Why do I try to dress appropriately? Why do I practice figuring out, well, what would the interview questions be? What would be a good thing to say? How can I make my experience relate to the job description that I read online? Uh, why, why prepare for anything? Because if it's God's will for me to be the plumber for Road Rooter, then he's gonna give it to me. So I could just go to the grocery store to buy my groceries for the week, and I will run into the owner of the Roto Rooter person of the place and um, somehow strike up a conversation with him and find out that he needs a plumber and he'll just hire me on the spot. Right? Because if it's God's will, then it's going to happen. So why am I even praying for God's will and trying to listen for the still small voice? Because if, if God is going to work all things together for my good and he's orchestrating all this, then why do I even do anything? You know? Why doesn't God do it for me? But you are an adult. You're a spiritual adult. So then God expects you to read his word, believe what it says, and apply it. And it's not listening for some still small voice. But as I think of things, I am more likely to pick something that God would want me to do, the situation using the mind of Christ, because I've got the sound doctrine in my inner man. So just like I make decisions on what to wear based upon what is in my mind, if what's in my mind is sound doctrine, then what I'm thinking over isn't, well, how do I impress this person or what I'd... Instead, I'm thinking, what would Christ do in the situation? And I've got the information from Paul's epistles to know what Christ would do in the situation. So I apply the doctrine, the all wisdom and prudence that God has abounded toward us and the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are hid in Christ and all things that are pertaining to life and godliness. And I apply all those things in my in my thought process and so then I make the decision according to God's will and I don't have to worry about listening for some still small voice and you know I really did not want to date that ugly woman but God told me to date her and so I'm going to ask her out and I'm going to go on a date with her even though I didn't really want to go out with her you know it was it was God he spoke to me you know do you think that's really going to happen it didn't happen at the Calvary Chapel that, that I was at uh you, I never saw um because you would think, you know, a lot of times you, sit, you look at people and you say, well, they seem right for each other. Uh, I don't think I ever looked at somebody and said, what is that woman doing dating that guy? Or what is that guy doing dating that woman? Well, see, if it was God's will, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Because God judges on the inward, not on the, not on the outward. But yet all these people that were there, you didn't see something where you'd say, huh, I wonder why that's the way it is. Well, God must have led him, you see. So God doesn't change your circumstances. You're not listening for some still small voice. But if he did change the circumstance, which I guess is possible, uh, because he is working things out for the spiritual good, you'd never know it. So maybe God does want you to be a plumber. Maybe somehow the way you do it is by uh, finding that guy at the, at the grocery store, the road of rooter But how do you know that that's what God did? You know, did God somehow manipulate the circumstances to where you met at that time you know is that God working in the background or maybe it's just decisions you made or maybe it's Satan doing stuff you don't know so don't go and say well God led me to be the plumber for Rotor Rooter because I met the owner of the Rotor Rooter there at the at the uh, grocery store because you because you don't know what's going on in the spirit realm if God so what you do is you just use God's word and use the mind of Christ to make your decision and if you don't, um, if something just happens to work out the way it does, you don't know if that's just chance, by chance that happened out, or you don't know if God manipulated it, or Satan did something, or somebody else did something. You don't know. So don't go saying, well, God did this. God led me this way, because that's just people trying to look, make themselves look good. And you don't know that's really what it was. So... Um, so does God change circumstances? If he does, it's for your spiritual good, not your physical. And if he does, you don't know that he did it. So just read God's word, believe what it says, makes decisions based on that. And then you know you're using the mind of Christ. Thanks for watching.